Hello YouTube, Steam, Indie Game Stand, the entire internet. This is Ben with another Mysterious Space update. Uh, I want to quickly apologize in advance. I haven't been keeping uh, up with the comments on YouTube and on Steam. This last weekend I was out of town for a few days. Uh, this next weekend is also going to be super busy. And then the fact that those two weekends in a row are super busy means the rest of my social life is crazy. Uh, and so I've been having trouble finding time to, to keep up with all this stuff. That being said, uh, I was visiting some friends uh, this previous weekend, and all my friends go to bed much earlier than I do, or perhaps it's more accurate to say that I stay up much later than most people. I stay up till like 2 a.m. So while all my friends were going, oh, I'm so tired, it's 10, I was going, all right, I will work on Mysterious Space for three hours, I guess. So that's what happened. Um, so. I have been working on Mysterious Space, and let me show you what I've been working on. Let me grab the controller. Doo -doo -doo. We will name the ship uh, Ben, I guess. You know what? We're just going to call it B. All right, so before we even play, let's look at some options. Um, there are some new settings. Someone asked to be able to see numbers, precise numbers, for shield, armor, hull, so you can see in the upper left as I turn this on and off. You get numbers. Uh, I'm not super pleased with this particular display. I was initially wanting to put the numbers on the bars themselves, but you can kind of see that there isn't space to do that because the words overlap most of the bars. The bars are thin. I could change that stuff around. I kind of like the way it looks, um, you know, when you don't have the numbers. So I don't know. You know, this, this, this is not perfect, but it, it'll do for now and I'll come up with something better. I've also, as you can see, uh, added camera lerp, which is something that people were talking about. Uh, and something that I have seen online is this is a good idea if you want your game to be comprehensible to players. Uh, and I think I mentioned before that when I showed this game to my dad, he had trouble getting a sense of motion. Uh, my dad does not play video games, but I think the fact that, you know, as a noob having that problem, it tells me that if I made it better for him, the experience would probably be better for everyone. So Camera Lerp is now in the game. I, I'm still not used to it, so I made it an option. Uh, I'll probably just get used to it. Uh, the default is for it to be on, so whatever, but you can come turn it off. I should mention Vibrate Controller. I have the code in place, uh, so I'm using a library called Monogame, which is based on XNA. It's a thing that Microsoft made for making Xbox games. They don't support it anymore. Anyway, Monogame is kind of a, a replacement for XNA because Microsoft doesn't support XNA anymore. Uh, and they provide all the same functions that XNA had, but they don't actually, like some of them just don't do anything, and Vibrate Controller is one of them. There is a function that Microsoft's XNA provided to make the controller vibrate. Monogame has the function in there, but it does nothing, so I say vibrate the controller and Monogame goes, uh. So <laughs> whenever they get that uh, implemented, this will do something. It, it doesn't do anything right now. Anyway, let's have the camera lerp on. Let's have the numbers off, I guess, and let's play the game. And I'm really happy that we have an ocean world. Also, just a little detail. ZZ Omega Zero. So uh, when it used to be that the map was a straight line going from left to right, and you didn't really have all these like, same exciting choices that you have now, uh, and these were properly numbered, and they made this crazy grid, and just giving them a strict number didn't really mean anything. But I want the numbers to be there because they imply a difficulty rating. So I came up with a slightly different naming scheme that includes a number, and what the number is telling you is the difficulty rating of the level. So. That, that's useful. Anyway, let's go. Let's check out. You can see the camera lerp. I kind of move closer to the top of the screen until I stop. It's kind of awkward that I stop at the top of the screen, but there it is. Also, you may have noticed, let's get hit again by some bullets. Come on, hit me. Ah, as you can see, I've got like little 40s flying off me, and the, that is uh, a damage indicator. Great, I've died. <laughs> Didn't mean to, to get killed quite that much. Um, so let's try this out again and uh, not die. And you can see when I shoot guys, they also, I dealt 50 damage to them, fantastic. When I take damage from these, everything tells me. You might know, so that's kind of odd, right? Why do I only take 11 subsequent on subsequent hits there? And I, at first I thought that was a bug actually, but it's totally accurate. The reason is that armor resists 50% of, of collision damage. Uh, so when my shield is depleted and I start taking uh, armor damage from that collision, I'm now taking less. I'm taking half. Uh, so it was 20. I suspect I was taking 11 because I had one point of shield or something, 
and you know. But anyway, so it looks a little awkward, but it's it's working properly. Um, and that proves to me that it's working properly. But I really was, I was like, what? This must be a bug. Why am I taking different amounts of damage? But but no, it's true. Um, I'm really happy also that we are on a desert world now because I can show you sandstorms. So this is barely a storm, right? It's very, very small force. But you can see that even though I'm not moving, I'm slowly getting pushed back. Hopefully the storm will uh, pick up in intensity and you can you can see what it's like when we've got like a full, full storm brewing. Um, no, instead it just stopped. Well, it happens anyway. So, but, but that also illustrates the changing of the storms. The storms change in intensity uh, as you play. That's always really fun. Oh, even more fun now that you can see all the silly numbers. Um, there we go. That's a little stronger. You can also see that the storm is carrying that pickup along with me. Um, I really want to see if it if the uh, storm gets stronger. Um, but the pickups don't go through walls. <laughs> that was a problem. There we go. The storm, the storm has gotten stronger, and you can see the little, little particles are moving faster. Uh, and we can also see the pickups get stuck against the wall. Uh, so that's good, because <laughs> it used to push the pickups through the walls, and then you would be very sad because you couldn't find them. Um, fuel is, is immune from the pushing effects. So anyway, there are sandstorms. That's a new thing. I'm still kind of tweaking the mechanics, but the bulk of it is in, which is super awesome. Let's see if we can get an ocean or a lava planet. Perfect. It's like you, you could almost believe that I had hacked the game to be for this demo, but I did not. Uh, let's go and find the cool vents. So you may recall in a previous demo, I kind of had the entire level bubbling with with pushing forces. Now, yeah, here we go. Here's a little vent. Uh, and it's really slow to move against, and you get automatically taken up. You can also see my bullets get kind of carried up by the vent, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, we now have these columns of vents that can uh, be on the level. The fact that it was centered on the fuel was complete coincidence and kind of awesome. Um, but yeah, so it, they just kind of affect these columns. I would, uh, I think I would like it more if there was a, uh, I don't know, something in the terrain that really looked like it was a vent or something. Um, but there is no such thing right now. So it just, I just have the vents always come from the very bottom of the level and go up a random height into uh, into the level. And it's kind of too bad that the vent happens to be ending in the middle of the terrain. If it were not, I could show you how the pushing force is uh, weaker near the top of the vent. It, it kind of tapers off. So just, just a little detail. Uh, and I believe I have now shown you everything. Uh, the other thing I want to mention, and I'll just run around and play while I talk about it, uh, is Indie Game Stand. They approved Mysterious Space to be sold there. I have not... Uh, I honestly had not heard of Indie Game Stand until I went searching on the internet, so <laughs> it makes me feel kind of bad about using them. I'm like, who are these guys? I don't even know. Are they good? Are they terrible? Does anyone care? You know, <laughs> which I feel kind of bad about. But I'm going to be listed there uh, very shortly. I hope to have it done uh, later this week. I, I really wanted it done like today, uh, but it, again, the weekend kind of took more time than I anticipated. Uh, and I did not get as much work done on Mysterious Space as I would have liked. But I'm going to have, it'll again be a full version uh, for like 250 And, uh, you know, that may increase, I, I may increase the price as time goes on. I don't know how uh, Indie Game Stand does updates. Like, I would kind of like to do what Minecraft did, you know, where the game is cheap at first because it's not that great, but if you buy it, then you can have it forever at that price in all the future updates. Um, I think that's that sounds totally fair, uh, and I'm really excited to start getting a little money from the game because then, as mentioned, I would love to hire some pixel artists, some chip musicians, uh, and I'm going to need to get in contact with them first. Here's another little vent. Uh, but anyway, see if anyone is willing to make some music and art for the game for money because there are people out there who can do a much better job than I can. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty proud of my graphics, but again, there are better people. Anyway, I'm about done. I do not think there's really much else to show. We could take a quick look at the change log if you like, the working change log. Um, here's some code naming all the little sectors. You can see I'm going to do some more exciting things. Uh, not all in the ZZ Omega sector, and I'm not quite sure what I want to do with that yet. I think for this release, nothing, but in the future I'd like to make those be like totally different environments that, that you don't find elsewhere. Uh, but anyway, where's the... I'm getting ahead of myself. Where's the change log? Um... There are new things that I wanted, you know, I can show them off in the game, but there are things that enemies drop 
they will uh, drop kind of encyclopedia entries of themselves, uh, which you can then review in the collection. And someone suggested th this on Steam would be a cool thing. Uh, and, all, and it occurred to me it's a really good way to see the names of the enemies because I don't otherwise have names for them except in the code. And so, you know, in the change log, I'll refer to an enemy by the name and code, but who would know that? So there's descriptions of these guys now showing you the uh, threat level that they're found at. Um, and actually, that's a little different from the sector difficulty rating. I think you can find plus two. Anyway, so that's a little messy. Uh, that might have something I might want to clean up. I hadn't thought about it. But anyway, they show you some basic stats about the creature. Um, I, I may add more to this later. Things like the weapon's power and thing, uh, some stats like that are a little bit random. They have random equipment in the same way you pick up random equipment. Um, it's a little more restricted than for players, but but anyway, so, the, you know, all four-way FAMO Hot 2s aren't going to have the exact same weapon power, so I can't really report on their weapon power here. I could give a range in the same way that I do. Ooh, somehow I crashed it. Well, that's exciting. Anyway, that's in there. Uh, that will be... Check that out. Uh, I will obviously fix that bug before release, but those are in there. For all the enemies, it's kind of a rare drop if you can find them. Uh, I made it so that you don't find those drops when you're in debugging mode, because uh, I didn't want you to unlock content while in debugging mode. That seemed kind of lame. Uh, but anyway, there's some little equipment tweaks and you know, camera alert, all those sorts of things we talked about. Uh, and again, I hope to have all this out, not much added. I really am just at the stage now of testing and making sure all the text is right and all that kind of stuff. Um, so this is, this is the full change log. And uh, yeah, little bugs like the one I just discovered. I'm going to go over the game and make sure there, there aren't any, any more things like that. And uh, go ahead and release on Indie Game Stand. Anyway, I have talked much more than I meant to. Sorry about that. Thanks, as always, for watching. And thanks for playing. And thanks for all your guys' feedback. I, I do appreciate it. And, you know, I, I do want to thank people who give me ideas. And so I'm, I'm trying to do that in the, in the change log. And also in the About page within the game. So, because um, I do appreciate it. So, so thanks again for that and I will announce when the game is available. And, and again, I just want to, sorry, one more thing. This doesn't mean I won't be releasing on Steam. Steam is still my goal, like the thing I really want to do, just personally. So, so I'll, I'll definitely be continuing to push for that. So Steam people, I'm not abandoning you uh, just because the game is, is going to be on sale elsewhere. Anyway, thanks again. Goodbye.